Welcome back. I am Olivia with Olivia's Romantic Home. In today's video, I am so excited to share with you guys some DIY, Dollar Tree, and budget-friendly spring decor crafts. So I love to share with y'all how you can make your home's boutique gorgeous on a budget, and I truly believe you do not have to break the bank to have a fabulous, amazing home. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, punch the bell, and click all. Also, follow me on my Olivia's Romantic Home Facebook page where I share daily crafting inspiration with you all. Now, without further ado, let's Let's go ahead and plug in those glue guns, get out your glitter and paint, and let's get to crafting. For this Dollar Tree DIY, I want to share with you guys how you can take some of these Dollar Tree wooden cutouts and I'm simply hot gluing them to some pretty paper. I'm going to be adding them to a garland. There are so many different ways you can do this. I also have Mod Podge these before, but I feel like hot gluing them is just a little bit of an easier way. And they come, I believe, 12 to a pack, so you get a lot of bang for your buck on these. They're also great if you're going to be doing... Um, um, an Easter tree or you just need some fun little Easter decor pieces and make great garlands and then again I am going to share with you guys how I'm going to pick them in to the garland above my front door so once I had all the eggs hot glued on to the little wooden piece I'm just going to simply trim them out and to hang them you guys can easily take some um, little pieces of wire string those through the top because they do have little hangers at the top but you guys could also take some clothespins and hot glue clothespins to the back which is what i'm going to do i also found this super cute little pink rickrack um, that i'm going to hot glue around them because i was kind of in a hurry when i was hot gluing them to um, the front of these eggs um, so i'm just going to add this in and around and that'll get make sure that the paper doesn't pull up. So I chose a blue and white, kind of like that chinoiserie print, which is really in this year. And if you can see the little bows that I may be using for my garland, there's also blue and white in those bows. I'm trying to add a little bit of the blue and white as an accent color to kind of um, brighten up the pastel look, which I love pastels, you guys. But for my front door, I wanted to have a little bit more of a statement. So I am adding in that pretty navy blue. And my forethought with this is also is once Easter is over, then I can start thinking about, you know, the summer lemon decor. It looks really great with blue and white and also 4th of July. So I'm always thinking about how I can repurpose and reuse my decorations. And now you can see that I'm just going to hot glue some clothespins to the back and that way I can easily clip them into my floral garland. So here is what they look like and here is where I'm going to clip them in to this beautiful floral garland and in the next DIY I'm going to share with you guys how I create this floral garland but look how easy it is just to pop them in to a pretty garland and you can see I have a lot of different colors going on but hopefully it works. Let me know what you guys think about this and happy crafting! For this next DIY, I'm gonna make a beautiful front door garland. So I'm gonna take three different garlands and I'm gonna zip tie them together. I'm starting out with this summer garland from Michaels. And then at the flea market, I found this really cute, it has this little pitberry garland. So I'm gonna mix that in with the floral garland. And then I'm gonna add in this kind of whimsical greenery garland piece that was super inexpensive at Hobby Lobby. I'm gonna take about four to five zip ties and simply zip tie the garlands together because I want it to look a little bit more full. It's going to be the big statement piece that's going to go outside my home. You guys know I love to do a big floral garland and then take family pictures underneath it. Um, we do that every year and I want to try to change it up because the last couple of years I've done really pastel, like really light colored, which this is very pastel as well, but I feel like the hot pink is going to give it a little bit more dimension 
and the hot pink is going to match in with um, the wreath that I already made for this. The next thing I want to do is take some of these little Dollar Tree eggs and you can see I have a measuring tape laying out in front of this. That is kind of measuring the part of the garland that's going to be above the door. That's a little hack that you guys can use. And I'm going to simply take these Dollar Tree eggs and zip tie them into the garland. I think these Dollar Tree eggs are so cute and they're looking perfect so far. So here is how it looks. Now I had made a bunch of coffee filter roses. So these are just roses made out of coffee filters and I've shared that video with you guys a couple times. So hopefully you were able to catch that. I'll try and repost it on my Facebook. Um, without being redundant but I know not everybody gets to see things at certain times so anyway I'm using the pink and the blue coffee filter roses some of the coffee filter roses I have um, uh, little clothespins on the back of and then some of them the purple ones I'm just hot gluing into the garland um, for time's sake um, but these coffee filter roses to do this mini took several hours I like to put on a show and make them and I really feel like they look real really realistic and because my garland on my front porch is covered hopefully they'll be okay the next thing I want to do is create a beautiful bow for my garland I'm using my easy bow maker because it just makes it so easy I'm using this blue and white ribbon that I found on Amazon. I love using wired ribbon, highly recommend. And then I'm gonna layer on top of that with some of this pretty rose ribbon from Hobby Lobby. I think this rose ribbon is so beautiful. It's very cottage style. And I liked it mixed together with the blue and white because it kind of just adds some dimension and some flair. <laughs> It might not be for everybody, but I feel like it makes it look a little bit more grown up. Whereas sometimes I feel like when I do too much of the pastels, it looks a little bit too much like a baby room. But don't get me wrong, you guys, I absolutely love all of my pastels. And so here I am, I'm just gonna, I went ahead and just hung my garland on several nails that I nailed onto the outside of my house. And here is the finished look. I painted these topiaries pink and also added some pretty bows to kind of mix in with that and then in the next video i'm going to share with you guys how i kind of put everything together Now let's create a super easy little spring floral. I have my pretty little blue chinoiserie um, vase and then I'm gonna take some of these greenery pieces and simply just pop some greenery pieces in. I used everything to decorate my front porch with things I already had on hand. I know the chinoiserie or the blue and white oriental is really in this year and you guys can easily find it at Home Goods, TJ Maxx, um, Ross, or even you'll find some of these at your local thrift store, or you can even take a chinoiserie napkin and Mod Podge that onto some vases to make a faux chinoiserie, which I've shared with you guys how to do that. I'll try to pull out some of those videos for you guys and post those um, in some of my next video. But anyway, so I'm just adding in some greenery. I put some little floral foam down into this vase, and here is how it looks so far. It was such a beautiful day. I had to bring you guys outside for crafting. Now, originally when I did this, I went ahead and added in some of these little styrofoam eggs from the Dollar Tree, just to give it kind of a fun little Easter pop. I think once I had that done, but I looked at it from far off, I ended up changing it around, but I thought that this was a fun idea. So if you don't want to go all out for decorating for Easter, you guys can easily get some little Dollar Tree eggs on a steak, pop them into whatever floral planters you have on your front porch and call it good. Easter decorating doesn't have to be hard, but look how cute that is. Just adding that little spring pop of color. Now I'm going to decorate my front porch front door. I got this um, mat at Hobby Lobby. I believe it was $9.99. It was really inexpensive. And then I'm going to add in my little pink topiaries. These are simply those green topiaries that I painted a ballet slipper pink. And then I'm adding in just to fill them out because these planners are a little bit oversized, but they're really great because the topiaries have a tendency to fall over in the wind. 
So I just added some greenery in and around that and these cute little bunnies. I can't remember where I got those. I think I got those a Tuesday morning before they went out of business. And then the chinoiserie planter and the vase. I thought that looked pretty because it mixes in with the blue and white that I used in the ribbons. So I really like to fill out my front porch. I know this might not be for everybody, but I am more of a maximalist decorator. I like to see all my treasures. <laughs> And so anyway, I think it's coming out rather nice. Let me know what you guys think. I did end up adding some bows also to uh, the little planters. So here is the finished look. Let me know what you all think. Did I pull it together? What do you guys think about the bold blue and white? I think it's definitely something different for Easter, but I feel like it just adds kind of a really crisp look. I do know that blue and white is gonna be really a thing this year. And then my bunnies are just kind of popping around. Now here is your favorite creative director, Benji Beer. He's got his little raccoon. I bought him this toy a couple months ago and he really likes it, but you can hardly tell it's a raccoon because it's been so played with and you can tell how playful he is it was beautiful today it was about 75 degrees and I was able to take him for a nice walk up the hill and he got lots of cuddles and love he's currently sleeping um he's just such a funny little guy but say hi to Benji Bear all his kitty cat and um, puppy dog fans out there and it's funny because Tinky likes to take a walk when we go for a walk she'll kind of walk in and around um, some of the areas. Now here's one of Benji Bear's homies, his little buddy from down the street. I'm, I can't, his, this little guy's name, I believe is Cheech. <laughs> what a funny name. But he, him and Benji Bear kind of like to like sniff each other and say hi. Benji Bear also has a fun friend up the street named Moses who's a puppy. I think Cheech though is like a puppy dog that's about the same age. But um, it's a older couple that lives on the corner around the corner from us and then here is Benji Bear just trotting it up here is this beautiful white tree that is blooming near my house and then I have a red bud tree in my front yard which is also beautiful and starting to bloom you guys can see um, so spring is here now we have still gotten snow before on Easter but I'm really hoping that all that cold weather is behind us I'm ready for some nice pretty days and all of that kind of fun stuff and there's tinky bear she wants to say hi she's kind of like catting around she doesn't really like to get in the videos as much but she wants to pop inside but we love you guys thank you guys so so much for watching Thank you all so much for joining me on another fun and fabulous crafting and decorating adventure. It's a true blessing and honor to have you all here. If you all are new, welcome. I am Olivia's Olivia's Romantic Home. I'm a DIY crafty mama, and I'd love to share with you all how you can make your home's boutique gorgeous on a budget. For all of my long-term viewers and um, subscribers, thank you all so, so much for being here. This is my sixth season on YouTube, and you have truly carried me through this journey. Your comments, your love, your support mean so so much so thank you and this is truly a community of folks who love to craft and decorate and I know a lot of you all share your stories and um, you're some incredible women and men who watch these videos and I just want to encourage you guys wherever you're at your crafting and decorating journey keep going give yourself grace for the mistakes that you make and keep trying um, I promise you you're gonna get better as you um, practice and all that kind of fun stuff. So speaking of practice, let's keep practicing and staying positive, especially since our world has moved to more of an online community. Um, let's be kind online, kind to one another. Um, when you're on a social media platform, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, whatever, drop kind comments down below. Sometimes I'll even go through and like heart about 10 people's posts on my Facebook page. Um, and just because I think that we don't know what everyone is going through and the little bit of a bird's eye view that somebody posts on their Facebook page or on their Instagram isn't really somebody's entire life. It's kind of just the highlight reel. So you have to keep that in mind and try to be loving and kind. If you see something, you know, online that you don't like, just keep scrolling. Please don't put negativity out there because we already have so much going on with negative comments and posts and different things like that. Let's be positive and be the light, which is what God has called us to do. So anyway, that's my little tidbit for the day. I love y'all to the moon and back. I can't wait for our next video. And until then, be kind to yourselves, be kind to one another. I'll talk to you guys very soon. Bye.